city volunteers do disaster relief assessments and help affected farmers in central Mozambique. An elementary school in Malaysia inspires the compassionate givings of its teachers and students. Welcome to Dai Headlines, I'm Siri Su, thank you for joining us. The UN World Food Program is concerned that starvation will devastate Mozambique because the country's major crop center in central Mozambique was wiped out by Cyclone Idai. The farmers now only hope to have meals on the table. Fortunately, city volunteers have reached out. <laughs> These were corns, but they became like this after being in water. When Cyclone Ida swept through Mozambique, it even knocked down this giant tree. This tree was uprooted and knocked down by the cyclone. All his corns, tomatoes, and cassavas are also gone. His house was destroyed, and so were his crops. In just one night, he lost everything. It wasn't until one week later that he received this giant tent. I want to thank God because this is all my property. I wanted to live a better life, but I'm very grateful to have this. His son seemed to have contracted malaria, so he is hospitalized. His grandchildren now live with him in this tent. They lay close underground and sleep on them at night. Everyone can stand sweating so badly just by being in this tent for only five minutes. But he's very grateful to have this giant tent for his whole family, because before he had this tent, they stayed in that church that still has no roof. Not just his house, every house in the village has been destroyed. The children's educations have been interrupted for one month, and they are beginning to resume schooling. The roof of this church was destroyed by Cyclone Idai. We felt it was incredible that 260 people were staying at this church, so he immediately asked 30 children to show us how 30 people could sleep in this area. And this church had over 200 people for a week. Four weeks after the cyclone, they heard someone would give them relief goods. I heard from the village chief that someone will be providing goods to underprivileged people in disaster areas. The villager walked for five kilometers to the village office because he worried that he wouldn't be able to receive them. He arrived at the office six hours early. He doesn't know where city volunteers are from, but he said that he was truly grateful because these are the life-saving foods for his family. Malawi has been devastated by Cyclone Idai. Due to the disaster, 870,000 residents have been affected and at least 32,000 people displaced. City volunteers have traveled to one of the hardest hit areas. After communicating with the tribal chiefs, city volunteers have been assessing the damages and planning disaster relief work. From Blantyre to Mulanje, it is only 61 kilometers away, but because the road conditions were very bad, when we came yesterday, it took us four times longer to get here. It is normal to ride on bumpy roads to evaluate disasters. The cyclone knocked down all the power towers and power lines, so all the power lines have fallen to the ground. We must find ways to go through them. This is Mulanje, one of the heavily damaged areas the UN listed in Manawi. After the floods, the mud from these houses fell off, so the whole houses collapsed. That grandma's house has completely collapsed, but we can see that they have put aside some broken mud bricks. They're probably going to use them to rebuild their houses. The river beds have become dry, but the floods got shared and devoured all the farmland. Bananas, corns, and sugar cans were all washed away. The floods rose up to the dike. When we were walking on the plain earlier, the flood submerged it too, so the flood submerged all these houses. 
Children cannot go to school, and the adults do not know what to do. The volunteers are eager to find out more about disaster areas, so they head towards Falun Bay, another heavily damaged area. After Cyclone Edai devastated Malawi, city volunteers have been visiting affected areas and delivering love to the people in need. Volunteers have also started to rebuild houses of affected residents. In our report, we'll meet various residents and construction workers. <laughs> A bucket of red bricks weighs 40 kilograms. Female residents have to carry this on their heads and walk back to their homes. As one can see, carrying heavy loads on their heads is a common practice for women in Malawi. Every morning, I will bring my two sisters to carry red bricks because we want to move into our new house as soon as possible. We are very happy and excited. After Cyclone Ida devastated Malawi, many people have lost their homes. This is the case for the tribal residents in Chingombi. All of them wanted to have a good and stable house. This construction worker has been living in Chingombi for 19 years. He gave up his salary and come to help volunteers rebuild houses. Normally I get paid four U.S. dollars a day, or sometimes I will receive three U.S. dollars. I came here to help build houses because I know Ziji has been helping us tremendously, and volunteers have been delivering lots of love to us. This is why I wanted to cut my salary and come here to help out. Meanwhile, a brick manufacturer was touched by volunteers' compassionate giving. It's Usually I sell a brick for 15 kratcha, but I lower the price for Tsiji. I sell it for 12 kratcha. Why? Because I know you came to help us just when we needed it the most. So I know that I need to do something to help you guys out. Construction workers have put much effort into the process of laying bricks. With the help of tribal residents, everyone works together. And within three days of work, 70% of one brick house is almost finished. Esther's home is the first brick house that Tsuji built in the tribal village. Tsuji gave us love and hope. We learned how to share our love with others through the volunteers. Thank you very much. I hope you can continue to help our people who really need assistance. Home is very important for everyone. Brick houses also represent the love of volunteers. For tribal residents, volunteers are someone who they can trust and lean on. In Malaysia's Langor, an elementary school hosted an event to raise compassionate aid for those in Eastern Africa. At the school's weekly assembly, teachers and students contributed. Upon learning that the children of East Africa are eager to go back to school, the students here responded with donations. The principal of the school appears on stage and gives a hug to one student who is overcome with tears. I heard a principal's speech and I cried. <laughs> Aside from studying their basic subjects, we want our children to learn more, such as how to behave in morality. We want them to learn how to love someone. Although I'm still young, I can do my part and donate a little money to provide some help to them. If it is possible, I would like to go there and become a volunteer. Every coin and every banknote donated by these children shows their sincere love and compassion. Next, we'll meet a girl in Malaysia who has been adopting a vegetarian diet since a young age. On her ninth birthday, she especially asked her parents to hold a vegetarian birthday party. In addition, she wanted to help the flood-affected residents in Eastern Africa. Therefore, she inspired the compassionate givings of other children.
This is Go Yiyang's ninth birthday. She secretly planned a special mission on her birthday party. In Eastern Africa, three countries suffer from severe floods. Many residents' houses have been washed away. I hope everyone can drop their change into the coin bank so we can help them buy bricks in order to rebuild houses. She is shy and won't talk too much when she is around many people. But she wants to help the flood-affected residents in Eastern Africa by inviting everyone to make a donation. I think this is very courageous. I'm very proud of her. My friends and I made donations to help the affected residents in Africa rebuild their homes. There are many people sending their best wishes to me on my birthday. I want to spread this love to the people in Eastern Africa. Going on has insisted on holding a vegetarian birthday party to protect both environment and animals. With everyone's blessings, she has accumulated lots of love, which it will be spread to the other side of the world. Twenty-five years ago, a flood led Suji to conduct disaster relief in Cambodia. According to local Taiwanese businessmen, the level of flood control work in Cambodia is equivalent to that of Taiwan 60 years ago. In Takio province in southern Cambodia, as long as rains are heavy, there's immediate flood. Takeo province's Bori Cholser district is adjacent to the Basak River, which experiences a dry season every year from March to April. But from August to November, it's the rainy season for four months. When the rains come, the river exceeds embankment. Within 10 kilometers, the Bori Cholser district, all the rice fields saw flooding taller than me, reaching a height of two meters. Insufficient government funding for a drainage system created this problem. To prevent flooding, this dirt road rises up two meters, which was a solution implemented this year. In the rainy season, flooding occurs. In the 10 districts of Takeo province, with a population of 900,000 people, their livelihood is based upon nature. When it rains, they go on the lakes to fish. Up to 80 percent of the people are farmers as they hope for a bumper harvest. They are also dependent upon rain. This year there was abundant rain, but the harvest did not meet their expectations. Last year, one hectare will result in a harvest of eight tons, but this year we only received six to seven tons. Changes in nature, we don't know it was flooding last year, but the harvest was good. This year's harvest is not that good. I really don't know why this year's harvest is not so good. Before the rainy season, all the farmers have planted their crops. They use this natural rain for their fields, and when there is rain, there is no need for them to do any irrigation. Three years ago, the provincial government dug this channel in front of us, which brings in water from the nearby Basak River. Before the water was acidic and the crops died and we couldn't make any money. So they dug this channel and diverted water from the river. Then the fields became more fertile and the harvest got better. In Cambodia, the country's rice paddies cover 3.21 million hectares, but only 15 percent have access to waterways and 5 percent have irrigation systems. As far as we can see, there are fields everywhere, but there are no irrigation ditches. This means that farmers are largely dependent upon the rain, and this means there is a fear of floods that could one day destroy all of their crops. 
Also in Cambodia, despite suffering from poverty, the residents near landfill still donated money to help affected residents in Eastern Africa. They had attended a free clinic and donated the equivalent of a few U.S. cents or a nickel to the cause. Right next to this garbage mountain, Team of Singapore, in conjunction with local Digi Cambodian doctors, hosted this small free clinic offering internal medicine, dentistry, and traditional Chinese medicine. I'm sore and I have high blood pressure. The traditional Chinese medicine doctor used a lot of needles. It was not so painful. We really need medical care here. Most of the people here have serious illnesses. Their work involves carrying very heavy things on their back. Also, the odor here is very strong and can affect the body in a negative way. Going outside to see a doctor requires spending quite a lot of money. Seizing this opportunity, volunteers also explained they were raising compassion for flood survivors in East Africa. Fik, a 15-year-old, does recycling in this garbage dump every day and is still willing to share his love and compassion. There was a flood in East Africa, although I only have a little compassion. I still want to help them get better. Okay. When I heard that they couldn't live in their homes anymore, I felt that this was very sad and painful for them. The Zhiji Cambodia Liaison Office also held a free clinic. It was immediately surrounded by love and compassion. I saw that the residents of East Africa were suffering from natural disasters. I really felt pity for them and the fact that they have no water to drink. <laughs> I learned that East Africa flooded and many people passed away and others became sick. I also learned that some families have no place to live. Because of this, I thought about giving some of my love and compassion. I think this is actually very meaningful. We not only help the residents of this area who need medical help, but they can also accumulate some blessings for themselves. East Africa is a little worse off than Cambodia. I hope that the people here have the ability to at least help other people. This event shows that everyone can come together to generate compassion and love for those around the world who are in need of help. In our next report, we meet a senior city volunteer who is always serving at Tima Free Clinics in Shuangxi. 88-year-old Lian Wupen suffers from poor eyesight. However, that does not stop her from dedicating herself to city's volunteer work. To promote a free clinic, I need to go to Sangang, Mudan, and Waigan boroughs. I need to travel throughout the streets of Shuangxi. I grew up in Shuangxi. I've been here for 87 years already. Therefore, I know a lot of people. I underwent volunteer training in 1996. Carrying out Siji's work in 1993, I was the first seed in Shuangxi. I also grew up in Shuangxi. I lived there for 70 years. I call her mommy. She's everyone's mommy. When I go out, I need to say hello to people about meeting them. Therefore, I delay the time. People say that when I'm around, it is hard to control time. Shi 
After my eyes suffer from macular degeneration, I cannot see very clearly. Therefore, I started using this magnifying glass. In the past, I wrote small words. Now that I can hardly see, I need to write big characters, such as honorary board members, commissioners, Cixin, in addition to the people establishing a free clinic and cultivation ground, have asked me for help when they were searching for information. Conducting free clinics involves hard work. In the beginning, we did not have vehicles or manpower. How did I recruit people? I was very mindful. I went to plead with the borough chiefs and the community leaders. I asked them for help. At the train and bus stations, I waited for people. Then I started to memorize each of them. It has been 10 to 20 years. It worked very well. You cannot say that you are old. If you say that, you will be old. You should say that you are still young. I vowed to Dama Master Zheng Yan that I'll volunteer all the way to my last breath. She said that she will keep volunteering no matter what. I replied, that's fine, mommy. I will volunteer with you till we take our last breath. In Malaysia, the students at Siji's tutorial class in Penang made vegetarian snacks for a charity event. They hope they can help the three countries devastated by Cyclone Edai in Eastern Africa. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.